virtually. We also have a few guests in the audience. We have uh, Mitch Pisek here. Um, welcome. He's uh, checking out our Remarkable Club. We also have Ashley Hyatt. And Alan, Tom Alan Thompson, who's here. Thank you so much for joining us. And now we have the one, the only, Jeff Ronstan introducing our keynote. He, he knows her kind of well. Jeff has been a member since 2006, used to be Tuffy Vittorio, and is a cigar and bourbon aficionado. Okay. Thank you, President Jen. Um, so, I, I just have something to share with you guys. It, it, it happened this morning, I was on a webinar, and this gal talked about sunflowers. And the unique thing about sunflowers is that when you look at a sunflower, it's always facing the sun. That's you know that's how they grow; they get their energy. And the sunflowers follow the sun. You know, if the sun's over here, they face over there. If it follows the sun around it, but if there's no sun, the amazing thing about sunflowers, they face each other, and they give each other that energy. And I thought that was the perfect description of. Tiana Ronstadt. So Tiana Ronstadt. I'm working hard here. Tiana Ronstadt is a wife, mother of two, sister, daughter, friend, volunteer, speaker, coach, mentor, and counselor, spa junkie, so true, cheerleader, and advisor. She's a vibrant lecturer, workshop facilitator, and educator with over 25 years of financial planning experience. Tiana founded Power Women Investing in 2006 with a mission to empower individuals to gain financial independence so they can pursue their most ambitious dreams. She's a sought after mentor and speaker in the financial industry and in the Tucson community. She's married to me, has two children, both going to South Point Catholic High School. Thank you. Uh, me and Larry, and there, and uh, and ladies and gentlemen, fellow Rotarians, please welcome Tiana Ronstadt. Visualize it. I can actually create it to be true. 
I'm going to go through what you're going to keep here in a minute. So first, go through the cards once. Get a feel for what they look like, the pictures. You're going to have some blank pictures in there. Everyone does have the same pictures. They're going to mean different things to different people. Step two, divide them into two piles. Those that you want to keep and those that you're going to discard. Which ones am I going to keep? Those that actually mean something to you. You all of a sudden have a feeling that you're like, that picture means something to me now, and I want more of that in my life now. You're also going to select pictures that potentially are things that you don't have in your life right now, but you would like them in the future. So again, you're scrolling through the pictures. You pick those in the keep pile that you have now, but you would like more of as well as those that maybe you don't have now, but you would like in your future. There is no magic number to how many cards you're gonna keep. Once you have your keep pile, if you'll take your discard pile and clip it back with your little clip thing. Again, for those watching, if all you did was print the sheet, you can circle those that you're keeping and you can X out your discard. I'm going to give you just a couple more seconds so that you at least have a keep pile and a discard pile with the clip around. Again, your keep pile are things that resonate with you today that you would like more of or things that you don't have currently that you would like in your future. Are you talking? What else do you hear? Is there a smell? And most important, So 
you'll slowly come back to the room, get comfortable. There's a page in your packet that has those questions in it. If everyone will just add, write down one word, one word, how you feel, what it meant to you, who was with you, just one word. It's basically the back of the one page. You only have three pages in there. The questions that I just led you through are in your packet as well, so that you can continue to do this exercise. Because we did that very quickly, I am going to share with you something that I have recognized about myself. Is I now know exactly what I want my future to look like. So in a stressful situation, specifically in traffic, what I do is when I get to the stop sign or stop light, I literally put my car in park, close my eyes, breathe three times, and put myself back in my picture. It helps me remember that it's not about anything else going on outside. It's all about how I'm showing up. And I don't want that influence in my picture. So if you're like, well, that was really fast. I probably would have picked a different picture. Okay, or if there was someone else in my picture, I want to make sure that they have a picture. Make sure you don't just say, this is our picture. Everyone gets to have their own. So quick funny story, Jeff and I have been married about five years. I made him go through prosperity picture. I know it took five years to get him to get the visualization and everything. Anyway, and he said, well, we are saving to sell everything, buy the nicest RV, and visit all the national parks in the nation. I said, that is extremely interesting. And that is not with me. <laughs> so what we find is that many people begin to save for different pictures, but they don't actually talk about going to the same place. And then they show up and they go, well, this isn't what I was going to do. Right? So again, make sure that the other person gets the choice to go through your discards, to go through your pictures, and have that conversation if there's someone else in your vision. So that's the intuitive side. The other side is the logical side. We all know, right, we set goals. Goals have to be measurable, attainable, right? They have to be logical. So when we look at the goal sheet, there's a quick quiz in your packets. It's got six questions. I just need you to quickly answer those. That's what 
makes you worth something. And then what do you owe? Do you owe someone an apology? Do you owe someone forgiveness? Do you owe someone grace? Because no matter what the financial side of it looks like, if the intuitive and emotional side is not connected, you will not achieve greatness. Secondarily, in this time, we've had all this time, right? Have you actually kicked the tires on your policies? What I find is people buy and sell homes, they just keep the same policy. They change spouses, they just keep the same policy. They do. They do. It's Life Insurance Awareness Month. I would be not an advisor if I didn't say, please, please check your beneficiaries. Please, please kick the tires on your life policy. Look at it. Do you have too much? Do you have too, not a little? Do you have whatever? Make sense? Kick the tires on it. Step three, let's move that intuitive and that logical side together. You have a window that looks like this. It has four panes. You're going to take those pictures in your peak pile. You're going to outline them. In this quadrant, it's things you want now that don't cost very much. In this quadrant, it's things you want now that do cost money. In this quadrant, it's things later. I'm sorry, now that do cost money. In this quadrant, it's things that you want later that don't cost very much and vice versa. So it says it right there, less money, more money. The time is not the measure here. We do this workshop, I do it almost weekly at Canyon Ranch, and one of the things that I find is they always want to just take all these little words off because their picture is their picture today. I'd encourage you to do the same thing. The reality is that your vision board is just what's important to you and what you're striving for. All of these, when you go home, so you'll have your key pile. Good job, Jim, already outlined yours on your board. I'm very proud of you. Chris Mooney, good job. These are stickers. Look, you just peel them off and they'll peel the stick down. So you go home, you can literally, if you ever did a vision board before, you remember you got magazines, you had, it was a whole process. If you've never done one, I promise you, you're going to love this. Okay? So you just can do the stickers. We're not doing that while I'm talking, because it's like we take good time. You're more than welcome to keep working while I'm talking. Okay? Make sense, everybody? Everybody with me? These are stickers. All right, once you have your board, you're going to find that. Two things we would like. Number one, if you're willing, please post your board. We keep all the prosperity picture boards. You don't have to put your name or anything. It's just a picture of the board. The reason is that it tells people and reminds each of us that every picture is going to mean something different. And remember those blank cards, you can actually write or draw anything you want on them. Very important then to share the, your prosperity picture with someone else and make sure that you keep your vision board in a place that you can see it so that you actually continue to strive for that vision. What I find fascinating is the number of people that did vision, board, vision boards in January and February. And even though, yes, travel looks very different, that's really the only thing that we've seen that has changed. All the other things have actually moved forward for them even through these unprecedented times. Step four, tying my board, my vision, to actually what I have. I look at buckets, I'm very compartmental, so I like thinking that I have a bucket <coughs> of savings or money specifically for a goal. If you've never thought about that, there's a worksheet in your packet allows you to think about that. What is this bucket going to do on my vision board? Here's the quadrant that I need money. That's where that is going to go. That bucket that I'm saving for is going to go there. It's just tying, again, the logical and the intuitive so that you can measure and be attainable in your goals. This quote by my husband, God, he is my absolute favorite. Your beliefs become your thoughts. Your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. Your actions become your habits. Your habits become your values. Your values become your destiny. Our mantra is that you are enough, you have enough, and you will thrive. Thrive is simply another word for prosper. 
Because I believe that many of us don't think we are enough or that we have enough. And the reality is that you are. So when I think about life, it's really just like boarding a plane. I buy a ticket. I figure out my seat. I pay for all my luggage. I get on the plane. The minute I sit down and listen to the security, right? That's the end of my control. The pilot is the only one that knows where I'm going. He's the only, he or she's the only one that can see hazards. But life rarely actually gets us to our destination the way we plan. I'm sure many of you have had emergency landings. I'm sure there are some of you that have had forced landings where you needed to force the landing to kick some baggage off. And then there's some folks that just circle. And the reality is that a plane cannot fly unless it refuels. So if you've never actually figured out what you're going to, how do you know that you're going to get there? So you have to stop, refuel, let off the baggage, maybe kick off a couple passengers, bring on new passengers, make a new flight plan, and take off again. Because a plane was meant to fly. I find so many folks in forced landings, they never, ever leave again. Some don't even get off the plane. Can you imagine? <laughs> Grief is hard but we were meant to fly. So you have to get off the plane, unpack the luggage, unpack the baggage, deal with it, and then make a new flight plan and get on the plane. And I tell folks, if all you do is close the door and leave the gate, it's a win. I don't really need you to have a whole flight plan. I just need you to get off the other plane. Make sense? Life is just like boarding an airplane. So we have been given a gift with this forced landing is the way I'm calling this COVID in some regards. What have you done with the gift? What have you done with the gift? Step five, enjoy the journey. Jim Collins in his book, Good to Great, talk so much about becoming great that what resonated with me is he forgets should I've met people that forget to recognize all the good. So please be careful if you're so laser focused on becoming great. Remember, there's a lot of good along the way. He also talks about who's on your bus. And when we think about that, who is on my bus in my life that cheerleads for me, that challenges me, that supports me, that helps me connect my vision and my plan to make a reality? My hope is that if you don't have somebody that's cheering for you, that you find someone. Or if you have someone that isn't living up to your expectations, that you find and hire someone else to get on the bus. They're out there, just waiting to be asked. My other favorite quote is by Warren Buffett. And it says, don't sleepwalk through life. Think about that. And in Rotary, I believe that that's one of really your mantras. It's not just about showing up and filling a seat. Right? It's about being involved. It's about someone asking you to do something and you saying yes. And so don't sleepwalk through life. Don't just show up and fill the seat. Take all the oxygen out of the room. That's not good for anybody. I'd much rather you stay home. Right? So our five steps. One, have a vision. Actually create a vision. Step two, figure out where I am financially to actually create a goal that's measurable and attainable. Step three, actually create a vision board utilizing 
two to three to four. So basically, I know how in the world am I going to pay for the vision. And step five, enjoy the ride. And be sure to show gratitude. Most importantly, be grateful for yourself. I'm a very faithful person. But I was reminded not too long ago that I need to be kinder and more thankful for what I've done. I find that we beat ourselves up a lot. So as silly as it sounds, give yourselves little hugs right now. Say thank you for bringing me here today. Thank you that I am successful. Thank you that you worked out and have awesome packs. Yep, that was good. I liked it. All right? It has been a pleasure and a gift. I know you can do it, and I'm counting on you. Thanks so much. All right. I came here with absolutely no idea what I was going to say, but I would like to say 
I am not sick. <laughs> All right. I have a very strange voice, and it's from um, spine surgery that I had in June. And one day, everybody will actually hear my real voice, hopefully sooner than later. And I also have allergies, so I sneeze. So trust me when I tell you I'm a healthy person. <laughs> and I um, gladly did a donation to the Rotary Foundation uh, to celebrate my birthday. Thank you. district governor, past president, member since 2010, uh, an amazing Rotarian. This is really special to make this presentation. And it's to Hugh and Alan Thompson as major donors of Rotary International. Today we are honoring Hugh and Alan Thompson as level two major donors of Rotary International. Donations to Rotary International or the Rotary Foundation, if you will, such as Hugh and Alan have given with their loving hearts, change lives, and make dreams come true. When Rotarians, through giving, promote peace, fight disease, provide clean water, save mothers and children, support education and grow local economies, the world becomes a better place. And that's what donations do. In member of our club since 1989, Hugh served as our club president from 1997 to 98. He has experienced firsthand the positive work of Rotary in many areas, and to only mention a few. As a Robeson Reader mentor, participating in our club's 3-H, Bohecto and Manicer, our wheelchair project with Puerto Vallarta, which we saw last week, Build the Future, on a medical mission to Vladivostok, Russia, a friendship exchange in Turkey, as the group study exchange team leader to the Middle East, plus riding annually in the Altura de Tucson in honor of his father's early work with polio in Tucson. Can we have a show of hands of how many here have known someone who was on a team that went to the Olympics. Just a few. Well, now you know at least one. That's Hugh Thompson. Hugh was an alternate member of the 1956 U.S. crew rowing team to the Olympics in Melbourne, Australia, but regrettably did not get to use his oar. His crew rowing team was from Yale University, where he was a junior, and they had won the Olympic trials, and he was one of the two alternates. That eight-person U.S. team did win the gold medal. Hugh's amateur rowing did take him, however, to compete in many foreign countries, including Eastern Russia and Latvia, before the Berlin Wall came down. What Hugh shares about his Olympic experience is what we all, as Rotarians, hope for, peace in the world. To quote him, the feeling at the Olympics was one that you would always hoped would engulf the whole world. All the political curtains came down. Everybody was honored for their performance, regardless of their country. It was a time when you could see that people really do have a potential for understanding each other. Another part of Hugh's life that is not well known is his long-term connection to polio. In the summers of the early 1940s, as a youngster, Hugh used to go with his pediatrician father to Tucson Medical Center where he made rounds on his polio patients in iron lungs. Hugh shares it was humbling to see those kids unable to breathe for themselves, but he recalled their remarkable spirits. Later in medical school, Hugh had the opportunity to be a research assistant for a polio project on the new polio vaccine. 53 children at the State Children's Hospital were first immunized with a live polio virus, and then after a time, infected with a live polio virus. None of the 53 children became infected with polio. With great pride, Hugh shares that in the early 1960s, his father planned and carried out the first countywide polio immunization program in the country. 
right here in Tucson. Yes. He was also a Vietnam veteran, having served a tour of duty following his completion of his advanced orthopedic training. He was chief of orthopedics at the 8th Field Hospital in Vietnam and also served in the same position at the Army Hospital of Fort Huachuca. Following his military service, Hugh set up his orthopedic practice in Tucson for 26 years before retiring from active medical practice. His list of Rotary and Community Volunteer activities fills many sheets of paper. He is a recipient of our club's Service Above Self Award. Today and for many years, Hugh continues to chair our club's Rotary Support Committee, which used to be the Sick and Visitation Committee. Hugh and Alan have been married for 35 years, and together they have shared five children. Additionally, they have hosted a Rotary Exchange student from Spain, an ambassadorial scholar from Russia, and Rotary Vocational Exchange groups from Russia, China, and touring foreign exchange students from various countries. Hugh and Alan are already wearing their level two major donor pins and are receiving the crystal from the Rotary Foundation with their names engraved. As our special gifts to you, which Charlotte has in hand, as our special gifts to you, we have vintage fold-out postcard from New Haven, Connecticut, and Yale, Hugh's alma mater. And a book with the appropriate title during our current pandemic, Wait Till Next Year. <laughs> Please join me in congratulating you and Alan. Something you might be interested in signing up for. Can I see a show of hands? 
Okay, great. I will take it uh, back to the president and the board. Thank you. Good job. And we have Joe. Yeah, it's just me. Okay, we're going to start. We're going to start with the uh, Peace Builder program. So, Ellie, would you come up and uh, join me? Uh, we have a little presentation. Uh, Ellie and I have been working on the Peace Committee, and we started actually forming a committee with a meeting with Jen and Bob Logan back in July of last year. And we're doing an awful lot of great things to promote peace. One of those is called a Peace Builder Club. Ellie? Peace builder clubs play a vital uh, play a vital role in sparking passion and a direction for peace within their own clubs, <laughs> districts, and communities. And we are so excited about Tucson River becoming a peace builder club. Our district peace committee that was formed last year just rolled out the peace builder program this month, modeled after District 5495's peace builder club and also District 5100 in Oregon. They have a strong peace builder. And we now have a Peace Resources page on our district website, so please take a look. A Peace Builder Club defines itself simply by committing to peace. And isn't that what we all want? When we commit to peace, we commit to furthering peace efforts, locally and globally, promote peace in our communities, create space and awareness for peace, and help build a culture of peace in our district. How do we do that? Well, one of the ways is by Planting a Peace Bowl, which we're going to do at the zoo. And we have several clubs that have planting Peace Bowls all throughout the district, so that's exciting. And also we can uh, participate in other peace projects, and we can do peace grants, and we've done peace grants, peace-based grants. We've done the Peace Initiatives Camp, so any district or global grant. We can attend peace events in our district or any districts throughout the world, really. As a Peace Builder Club, we receive peace resources and educational materials and join a wide, wide network of Peace Builder Clubs throughout the Rotary world. We truly feel that peace promotes the good in people and that peace is important. John Hugo said this about peace, and that's our General Secretary, of course. He said, peace is in Rotary's DNA. Whether it's peace in our neighborhood, peace within countries, or peace between countries, and no subject is more important or relevant than peace. Rotary should be a leader in peace, just like it is in polio eradication. Well, I agree with our general secretary. And we are Peace of Builder Club. And let's continue being a Peace Builder Club. And there's no better way than what we're doing right now. And that's being a Peace Builder Club. So thank you. The actual new banner that our peace committee for District 5500 actually designed in the, in the last year. So uh, there's also, let's go ahead and present that right now. So Ellie, as the District 5500 peace chair, we say peace. <laughs> the peace committee decided that uh, we want to have a focus, given everything we all have been dealing with with COVID-19, some very intimately, that we would like to have a focus on a day of peace for inner peace. So the Center for Community Dialogue and Training, a local not-for-profit here in Tucson, has been helping Southern Arizona to talk about challenging issues, and in this case, inner peace for over 40 years. So if you go to the district website, rotary5500.org, it's going to be Saturday, November 7th, and that's Saturday after Election Day. <laughs> so we're all going to need Regardless of which side, we're all going to need inner peace. And uh, so if you register, it's only $15. It's going to be from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. It will be a great program focusing on inner peace. <coughs> great. Now we're ready. Now we, now we also <laughs> focus on ticket sales. Jim's going to talk about ticket sales. Ticket sales, peace. Oh boy. Um, first, we'll focus on where we've been compared to last year. Uh, last year, we had 8,913 tickets sold as of September 24th. 
This year we have 13,335 tickets. All right. 49.6% increase. All right. Love that crowd noise. Uh, <laughs> so as far as things go, we've got some wonderful developments that Hugh Thompson has shared with me that I'm going to, in our next meeting, go in a little bit more detail. John Long has an incredible story of uh, uh, Hugh's campaign is really letter writing, the, is the art of letter writing to your friends. And it's a lost art, isn't it? But we can make it happen again. John Long had a relationship built up over years, and he never mentioned ticket sales. He mentioned Rotary and what Rotary was doing within ticket sales. And you know, make way for books and Pima, J10, and the rest of the story. I'll, John and I will tell next time we get together. The uh, if you if you haven't tried the the stickers, I was talking to Drew Baxter about this. Tammy did Candy did a great job. She actually made a prototype before she went to press with these stickers for the ticket sales. You gotta take a look at these. They're in the back table. We still have some. I mentioned it to Art Alice, and Art took two. Way to go, Art. Such a deal. Anything we can do to help us sell tickets is fantastic. Let's hear it for the number one team, March Maseratis. Yeah. <laughs> I want my potholder. <laughs> number two, January Jaguars. Hey. Number three, Wayne Meyer makes a big jump. July Classics. Hey. Number four, Jim Murphy, October Rovers. June Bugs are number four also. Pat Zumbosh and Matt Blair. Time is up. So number five, New Nitro Nitros. Number six, Motor Mayhem. And ladies and gentlemen, do we have quick the time for Jeannie, where is Jeannie? Yes. Right oh, Jeannie's going to come up and talk about the show. All right. <laughs> okay, I just want to tell you the good news. I was on the site this morning. We are up to $8,224 bid on our silent auction. Our uh, silent auction. Woo, woo, woo. We have 80 out of our 207 items that have bids of some sort. And there are 32 bidders that have made 155 bids. 19 of them could be Rotarians from what I looked at names, but I just means there's a big group of you out there that need to go online, register as a bidder, and find at least one thing, and there's zillions of things. You could, you know, there's 207 things. Discussions with the folks at the uh, Hispanic Chamber. You know, they've done a great service for our community in identifying 40 amazing people. We've had a discussion with them about how can we engage them in Rotary. And so uh, they've got their big 40 under 40 thing coming later this year. Uh, we'll get a little note out to everybody, but it'd be great if uh, Rotarians would try to support uh, the Chamber and what they're doing, the Hispanic Chamber, what they're doing with 40 under 40. I think it's really neat that they've identified these people and They've been very good with working with us and just great swimming with us. And Chuck has been involved in that, so is Jen and myself. So thank you. But again, if you support it, please do so. Hey, that's it, Jen. Thanks. <clears throat> okay, we'll wrap things up here. I just want to make a quick announcement that next week the Rotary office will not have normal hours. Dorina is out. She's leaving us. So if you guys need to make a stop by the office, make sure you call first. Uh, Carrie will be in. Um, all right. Would like to say thank you to all of our guests, including the virtual people who tuned in. Um, I hope you guys all enjoyed the meeting. If anyone would like to donate to our scholarship cups, there is a cup at the registration table. And when you're walking by that same registration table, make sure you deposit your name badges in there. Um, happy birthday, Curtis, Lynn. Thanks for sharing. Congratulations, Hugh and Alan. And thanks so much for all you do for Rotary. Yay! Um, as Bruce said, that was
somebody just piped in some crowd noise for me. That was nice. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> Uh, next week, we have our replacement mixer. At Vera Amore, it is on uh, Swan and Fort Lowell. Um, please, again, remember to wear your masks there. It's going to be outdoors. It should be fun. 70's not so bad. Um, and I guess with that, oh, I guess I should say there is a few more spots, so please register if you haven't yet. And we will go ahead and stand and join me for a toast. Everybody tell Tom to turn your phone silent. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In the interest of today's uh, topic, may you always know what your true riches are. Health, a loving family, many friends, and time to enjoy them all. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.